welcome back in the previous step we looked at a few ng commands ng dist ng test ng e to e and ng lint we looked at a few files which are related to each of those commands when we look at our folder structure there are still files which we have not really talked about in this video let's try and cover the other folders which are present in our workspace when I open up the source folder, you'd see something called app. This is where all our Angular code would go into. When we build Angular apps, we will create them using something called components and modules. And all the components and modules will be present in this app folder. The assets folder is where all the images go into. The content which needs to be rendered as it is, like images, they all go into the assets folder. When we develop applications, we would want to deploy them in multiple environments, local environment, dev environment, QA, production, test. All the configuration for each of these environments go into the environments folder. Now that we looked at the important folders, let's look at the other files which are present in here. Let's start with the tsconfig.json. We know that we would be writing code in TypeScript. But do you know that your browser will not understand TypeScript and your browser only understands JavaScript? So whatever code that we write, it needs to be converted to JavaScript. So whatever TypeScript code that we write as part of our source code needs to be converted to TypeScript. That is specified as part of your tsconfig.json. We already looked at readme.json. MD, which is kind of the documentation for this project. So if you have something to document about the project, you can put it in readme.md. We are building Angular applications and we saw a number of commands which we were able to execute in the last step. ng serve, ng build, ng test, ng e to e. And all these things need a lot of external frameworks and tools. All these frameworks and tools are specified in the package.json. You'd see that all the frameworks are specified in here, all the packages are specified in here, as well as all the tools that we would need to be able to run the unit tests, integration tests, and to run our Angular application. Whatever modules you have defined in package.json are downloaded when you run npm install. Node package manager is the package manager we are using. It's very similar to Maven. So once you specify the dependencies in here, when we run npm install, all these dependencies are downloaded to the node modules folders. The node modules is where all your packages, that's basically your frameworks and also the tools which you need to build and run your project are downloaded to. We did not really explicitly run npm install at all. Whenever we create a new Angular app using ng new, the npm install command is automatically executed. The git ignore file contains what are the different folders which should not be committed to version control. So when you commit this project to version control, all these folders would be ignored. Index.html which you see in here and the main.ts. We are inside the source folder now. So main.ts and the index.html which is present in here are the two things which are loaded up when we launch the Angular application. So these are responsible for bootstrapping the Angular application. At a high level, there is something called a root module which will be launched up by the test.ts which will be included in index.html and that's how the application gets bootstrapped. We will look at bootstrapping in detail a little later. The other files which are present in here is something called polyfills.ts. We know that different browsers have different levels of support for all the web standards. The same JavaScript code might not work in all the browsers. Polyfills.ts would take care of these browser incompatibilities and make sure that whatever code that we write would be compatible with all the browsers. The styles.css is where you specify the global application styles. So whatever styles, whatever CSS you would want to use across the application, you'd put it inside the styles.css. Test.ts is basically the starting point for running the unit test. So this is what is used when we run the 
ng test. In this quick video, we looked at all the other files which we were not able to cover as part of the previous step. The important ones which we discussed were package.json where we define all the tools and frameworks that we make use of and these are downloaded to our node modules folder when we run npm install. The npm install was automatically ran for us when we were creating the new Angular project. tsconfig.json defines how we would want to convert the TypeScript code we would write to JavaScript code which runs on the browser. The app folder contains all the important Angular code, typically modules, components, and all the other stuff which you would write as part of your Angular applications as it contains things like images that you would want to use. Environments contain environment specific configuration. If you'd want dev specific configuration or prod production specific configuration, that's what goes into environments. Polyfills ensure that all the code that you write is compatible across all the browsers. Style.css contains the global styles, global CSS. And test.ts is a starting point for running our unit tests. The idea behind the last two steps is to give you a 10,000 feet overview on the project structure, the different folders, the different files which are present in here. It's not really necessary that you need to know the absolute details of everything which is present in here. It's sufficient if you know at a high level this is related to this. And that would help you when we start building the Angular app. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye.